We're here with part four of Dan's how to hook up a trailer for RV transport. This is the last video in this series. Stay tuned at the end of this. I'll see you there. That's all I see you today. Stick around and wait for me. I'll let you go be, Bernie. About 8 o'clock. You can call me again. Bernie, will you wait? I mean, yeah. You have to I'm in. Mean, Bernie, what's going on? He said, well, I left for it about 4.30 this morning. Hammered out. It's been a while ago. I said, when you get here, let us know. I said, uh, holler, there's a horn over there. Sure enough, about 20 after 8, he pulls in out there. And uh, he screams. I mean, he screams. Bloody murder. I go running out there, he's got blood squirting out of his leg, and I come in and grab a towel and wrap it around his leg. Then he takes us to the hospital, one of the other guys. Took 40 some stitches, pulls his leg up. Mm. What did he do wrong? This is a test. You're right. What else did he do wrong? It drove too long, it drove 16 hours plus. So even though I've been doing it seven years, doing exactly what to do, he got the wooden block, put it out, had an H and H old slow electric jack. Well, they jacked the truck up, one day he went back to neutral. They jacked the truck up just enough, and he, he, uh, let me take the handle, pull the deal out, pull it out. He, oh, man! Still had six, seven hundred pounds on his bar. He had nine hundred pounds each week. Remember that? Mm. I don't remember what he came here for. Uh, except for me to be able to teach this lesson. Uh, so, he drove too long, he didn't jack it up high enough, and he stood in front of the bar. Anybody stand in front of the bar more than five, ten minutes, had no idea driving anyway. Well, I was never bar. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so when you jack it up, uh, <laughs> you can always pick that, see is it a little looser. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's all kinds of ways to tell you, get used to it. But being a professional, you learn what your time, what, what, you know, learn what your time is. Uh, but when you go to unhook it, you pull the pin, stand behind it, bring it up. Well, it's heavy. Crank it up, go more around. It'll be in front of it, whatever. I mean, ahead of it, not in front of it. Uh, I, sh I showed you where the weight went when I got it up, right? Snaps in. The load's right here, that's why that port return works. The load's going here. If it had a bracket to the hook was out here, putting this kind of load on there, Damage in frame all the time, ruin the brackets all the time. Uh, sometimes people forget and they get where they're going, they're tired. And so they put the block of wood down, they uncouple their jack and they jack it up to four inches. Yeah, it comes with it. So when they unhook that first bar, poof, it drops out of the cupper. Now they've got all kinds of weight hanging here, there, and everywhere as well. So there's just some number of things that can go wrong if you're not uh, paying attention. So I told about this a couple years ago. I had a guy standing back there, there was a group of about five here. He said, Dan, I'm so glad you told that. So my wife and I were out hooking up a, a, a tent camper a couple months ago. I said, I'm a tent camper. I heard a guy yell. And uh, he said, I'm an EMT in our local fire department. He said, so I went running down to see what I do to help him. And he's standing there beside his camper and his handle, his steel handle, is sticking out of the fifth little nose, fiberglass nose of the fifth little trailer in the next lot over. He said, John, let's figure out what in the world happened. He said, now I've got kind of a clue. I don't know, I still have a lot happened. Probably hit the ground ricochet. Uh, I, I did hear a guy did it right up here and caught his face, kind of tore his face up. Uh, uh, anyhow, that, that's real life. Things, things happen like that. Uh, the, the other guy, the back, I deal with here, says the back always has to go down. If I pull a 24 foot trader, the back may only go down a quarter and the front, nothing. 26, 28, the back goes down, 3 inch, half inch, the front nothing. 32, 34, the back goes down, half, three quarters, the front nothing. 36, 38, 32 foot toy hauler, uh, the back goes down, inch and a half, the front goes up a little, down a little. It, I have technically, as Ryan said, formed a bridge from that front axle back to the trailer, and what happens in the middle is predicated on this right here. It doesn't care much whether it's a three inch frame, four inch frame, five inch frame, six inch frame, distance from there to the top of the frame to the top of the bowl is always the same unless it's an upside down cupper. This is an inverted cupper, upside down cupper. They weld this on the frame, but it just set the frame on top of it. So now the top of the frame is up here. 
then just make that bracket two inches higher, that changes your length by two lengths. If you're nor normally hanging three loose, you'll hang one loose. If it doesn't change anything else, you're still hooking on the same way, blah, 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 blah. If, if that doesn't make you happy, I'll tell you, if they weld it on like this, then you gotta take your ball out, turn it upside down, latch it on good enough, jack it up high enough to get the bars up tight enough and this never falls off the ball. But they never do that. That was just my joke. Sometimes they start out that way, you know. <laughs> so I've got one more guy back in 1984. He had a, a two-key yellow and brown Chevy one ton dually. Back then that was kind of good because I really preferred orange at that point. You'd have them if you want. I'll get one in a minute. Huh? I'll get one later. Okay. Uh, and uh, we did him in that bay right over there. And he called me up about a week and a half after he was here. Maybe, maybe sooner than that. He said, Danny, said, I think you warped my frame when you lost the fifth little bracket in. I said, oh. He said, yeah, I, said, I just paid my first trip. I got a 3,040 mile trip to Southern California. And my back tires are almost bald. He told me some new tires. I said, man, do that. I didn't warp your frame, but how big a pit bull were you pulling anyway? He said, oh, I wasn't pulling a pit bull. I was pulling a 39-foot bag trader named it Travel Lion, way over here. And that trader I knew well. Back in 1984, that weighed about 700 pounds in the tongue. and didn't have any slide outs, blah, blah, blah. So it was a light trader. Should not have been a problem at all. <laughs> Sometimes back in the day, they put 13, 1,400 pounds of freight in there, but again, they spread it out. It wasn't a big deal. Uh, I said, did you use your bars? Well, he said, of course. I said, what did it measure? Um, well, uh, there were three other drivers there that were experienced. They helped me hook it up. And uh, he said, that my truck's not level. I said, oh, that's the problem. I said, I don't know how heavy it was. It should never sound level. Your truck is three, four inches tail high. Oh, that's what I meant. It looked the same with the trader on as the trader off. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are you going to do about my tires? Well, I didn't work the frame. I sure didn't work your axle because I don't weld on the axle. I don't jack it up by the axle, particularly by the pig, blah, blah, blah. And uh, what are you going to fix my tires? Well, you can't fix tires that are two weeks old and expect another two weeks not to have another slip in your bed, you know? Something's something the problem. And uh, so uh, I said, you're not giving me anything to work with. And I said, uh, you need to go find a Kmart parking lot. Go ahead and buy yourself two dollar yo-yo. Measure your truck carefully. Unhook it, shake it, measure it carefully. Call me back and tell me what the measurements are. Well, I was old school and had never been cussed out like that in my life. He got blah blah blah. He was upset about his tires and life and whatever. Brand new truck. And this, you know, if I got a three thousand forty mile run the first trip. I'm I'm happy camping. I'm gonna be pouring coal to it. See what it'll do. You know, get some big bucks and give it a hurry. Anyhow. Cussed me out, hung up. So I said, I better have me a ball bat, but I'm not suggesting he's going to be back in a week and a half or so and let me talk to her. Uh, uh, I've had to straighten out some head up, you know. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I'm not an hour and a half. I appreciate you. What's that guy doing? So I tried to tell him. Anyhow, uh, about an hour and a half later, he called me up and said, Dan, this is, I said, I recognize your voice, sir, and I know who you are. He said, oh, I'm sorry. And I thought the fourth iron video, I didn't do what the man said. Well, now I get called Mr. Dan every once in a while. And I didn't call the man very much. Uh, and uh, it's not a big thing, I don't care. Uh, he said, I thought they were four tires, I didn't do what the man says. He said, you're not going to believe it. I said, what? Well, the front came up three eighths of an inch. That's a whole bunch of seven hundred pounds of some weight on a one ton truck. And uh, he said, what the back do? Well, that's what you're not going to believe. I said, what did the back do? He said, the back came down three eighths of an inch. I said, okay, so you put 3,000 miles on, you've had the bars lift up, the back of the truck was higher, with the trailer on and with the trailer off. Maybe you all ever been in a one-ton truck, get on a little bit of a washboard road. Uh, How do you feel? About 45, 50 mile an hour, I feel a little bit nervous when they're doing this back there. I tried to get out of the fuel and slow down before it, whatever. Uh, I said, so did you have any sway problems with other noise? It felt like I was going down a railroad track. I said, do you have any place where the semis run and rain a little bit? It looks like snot, slippery and lame. No, no, didn't have any problems. Didn't have, any, didn't have a gravel along the road out west where the water runs out across the road. And goes in. I said, so, <laughs> but he's hearing me. Uh, I, I told him, I said, I, what I think is happening. 
said, I think every little expansion joint, quarter of an inch, eight and eight, they hit in a row, boop, 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 boop. I think you're back there just boop, 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 chewing themselves off. You're not blowing out a bunch of smoke, but it's blowing the tires off. And they would have been biased by it back then, which was not as good as your radios. Maybe they made, made two trips on radios, I don't know. Uh, anyhow, he's, 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 I, I can tell he's thinking, he's, he's getting it. I said, so you get out there and you're out there, I said, you get that 15 mile an hour headwind when you get out past. Yeah, I said, so did you pour the coal to it? Or just kind of ease into it? His answer was, you know, <laughs> which would have been the same as mine. I'd have been, like I said, I'd have been in a hurry to get there. 3,000 mile trip, that's nice. <laughs> nice anytime. <laughs> First trip, last trip. Uh, <laughs> uh, he says, well, he says, I got, I got 40 miles to do you. Well, how, how, do you, how do you think I should hook up? I said, you got a one-time do this. We're smart after you put it on a ball and drive over there 40 miles. Who cares? No, no, I, I want to hook the bars up. How should I hook the bars up? Well, sir, if you were hanging three loose, hang two loose. Let your back end down a little bit. It should be good. Okay. He said, I guess it's not like I'm going to be better than the next few that I hook up. End of story. As far as I know, you know, maybe we've got 10 trucks for it since then. I don't know. We've never rediscussed that. He's probably embarrassed to bring it up. If he's been back, which I assume that he has been, uh, but yeah. So that, that's 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 our guys. Hey, is he not incredible? Did he teach you something about hooking up weight distribution systems for RV transport? If you have an RV, if you've got a bumper pull RV, this is great information. It's time to pull out. We're leaving. It's time to go. So I'll see you down the road. Thanks for stopping by and enjoying this four-part series from Dan the Man at Dan's Service Center at Elkhart, Indiana.